How's it going, everybody? Rob Mango, Manchester Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in Connecticut. Got Jerry Lashley with me. And we're going to go over a scenario where, as for first responders and other medical professionals that uh, obviously are dealing with, you know, infected people a lot right now, or even the, the potential threat of someone being infected. And we're going to deal with that um, possibility of them trying to spit or cough at you. We've already had some scenarios right in our own state of Connecticut where this has happened, and you've seen them in the news all around the country. So with any attack that could be... Um, done against you. There's going to be things that we can do to limit that attack, but there's also going to be the reality that we can't limit the entire thing. So if someone is starting to cough or spit at us, we don't want to just stand there and let them continue to do it. We want to move in and take control as quickly as possible, be decisive about it, get them to the ground, get their head put, positioned away from us, and in essence, get away from the barrel of the gun, being in their mouth, okay? So before we even get into those takedowns, before we get, even get into how to secure them, we want to have, obviously, some personal protection equipment with us, if possible. Now, we realize in, in, in our kind of jobs that, you know, if you do have time to prepare, that's great, and you would go through those precautions as quickly as you can, but there are circumstances where things evolve so fast or so uh, spur of the moment that you may not have a chance to get any of this equipment. So, you know, if you follow me over here, I do have a few things that I'll, that I'll pick up and show you. So, obviously, we want to have some kind of um, protection for our hands, and gloves, eye pro if possible, and N95 mask is always uh, helpful as well. Again, this is if you know you're being sent somewhere where someone's combative and you, you hear it on the radio that, hey, they're spitting at people, stuff like that. You prepare as best you can ahead of time. Um, we would also, obviously, highly suggest your handcuffs because it's going to be awful hard to control somebody and put the mask on, uh, spit veil or something, if uh, their hands are free. So we're going to have to control them. Just like in jiu-jitsu, we want to position before submission. The same thing would apply here. We want to control that person, get them face down, get them cuffed, uh, their head pointed away from us with good head control, and then, and only then, will we be able to probably put this mask on, okay? And now I know Lashway over here has done this multiple, 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 hundreds of times in the prison system. I've used them as well, but he has definitely put them on a lot of times. All right, so <clears throat> your spit veil. A uh, few things to understand about it. It works by catching spit, not blocking spit. All right. A common mistake I see people make when they're trying to apply a spit veil is they try putting it over on the front. And it's really not that easy that way. Okay. It takes longer or it's harder. Two hands, we open it up. I come from behind the head and I catch the base of their skull with the elastic band. It's a good catch point. And then all I do from here is just loop it and pull it right over. As soon as the spit veil goes over, I pinch right here at the forehead and I draw it forward. What I'm looking to create is this space right here, okay? So when the person does, if they spit, it can flex and move and catch the spit. Common mistake I see people make is maybe it's an attempt to control their head, but they grab this veil and they pull it tight. The problem is when you pull it tight, you've gotten rid of or removed its ability to flex with the spit. And when the person spits, it just travels right through it, okay? So make sure when you put it on that it's loose, pinch at the forehead, pull it forward, so then they have as much space to their front as possible. Yeah. And again, you know, with these nets, not everybody has them. Uh, some cruisers, they have them right in the uh, glove box, and people drive around in them for years and don't even know that they're there. So they're very small. You can, when they're wrapped up, you can go in a cargo pocket. Uh, you should check with your agency, see if you have them, and if it's within your policy to use them. If you, so if you don't have a spit veil, let's say your agency doesn't carry them or whatever, you can utilize the person's clothing. I've had to do this a few times, where you just pull that t-shirt up right over the front of their face and hook it over their head, and you can even pull the front out, just like the uh, spit net, uh, to catch the spit a little better. And while it's not exactly the same as a spit net, it actually works pretty well. Um, and, and like I said, if that's all you have in the moment, that works. Now again, they're going to be probably face down on the ground, so you'd have to roll them to their side or sit them up. Uh, and, and to do that, but it's a good option if you don't have a spit net, okay? If the person has, say, a baseball hat on, for example, not everybody does, but some people do, um, even just once you have them secured, even just taking that hat and pulling it down over their face, you know, limits their vision and limits the uh, potential for exposure. If they do try spitting at you, you do have that barrier between their mouth and you. All right, so we're going to go over some takedowns, but also keep in mind you have tools that you carry. So. While we are going to show you some takedowns in the event that those tools failed or didn't work or you, for whatever reason, didn't have access to them, uh, there's still, you still should have a taser in most jurisdictions or pepper spray or some other um, object such as a, a shield is great in, in situations like this, people trying to uh, spit at you. So don't forget your other tools. Just realize that in the event they don't work, 
or you don't have access to them in the moment, that these are some options for you for takedowns. We're going to move into just a couple of basic takedowns, and really the takedown doesn't so much matter uh, as long as you're following the concepts and principles set forth as not standing directly in front of them, if at all possible. We're going to go over uh, the first one from the front, where you have no choice, and you know while you're talking to somebody, they start to spit at you or uh, uh, you know cough or whatever. You're going to move in and take them down. All right. So from here again, I'm not coming straight down. I want to catch this 45 degree angle right here. All I do is I step in and I intertwine my arms with Rob right here, bicep to bicep. As soon as I get this bicep to bicep, <clears throat> my hand that went underneath makes contact with my own bicep. This hand comes right up here to the shoulder. As soon as it makes contact with the shoulder, I shrug everything tight and then I shoot this arm right here straight. Notice how it turns your head away, Rob. Can you turn the spit on me? No. I mean, once once he locks that arm across, it pushes my face, much like you would from uh, you know side control, moving into like an arm bar or something like that. As he pushes my head away, I can't turn back into him. Yeah, uh, and if, unless I'm the exorcist, I can't turn my head the other way, so I'm kind of stuck. Soon as this happens, as soon as I get my arms straight, all I do is pivot my hips, step behind, sweep, bring Rob right to the ground. As soon as we're here, this hand that's underneath slides right up to the wrist. This hand that was here on the head tucks underneath, and I get this Kimura type control. The knee right up here by his head dives to the ground. This is what causes the pivot and turn right here. And now I have Rob's elbow between my knees. I have this wrist lock. I can give a little bit of nerve compression right here. Give me your hand, give me your hand. Hand comes free, cross your ankles, bring your heels to your butt. Now once I'm here, I keep this wrist lock. My handcuffs come out, apply the handcuffs. Then from here, I would put my spit veil on if I needed it. Yeah. And another, some more food for thought there is more than likely, um, and I work in an area that, you know, 55 square miles and very, very little chance at backup, but even there, uh, more than likely I'd have another person that would eventually make it to me and maybe help me get that other arm out or help me get that net over his, uh, over the person's face. So Absolutely. now we'll do it a little more game speed to show you that we're not just, you know, standing in front of the person, we're moving in quick and going through the takedown. Right here. Give me your hand, give me your hand. Bring your feet to your butt. Perfect. So now, let's say now, let's change the scenario a little bit. Let's say uh, you've been dispatched somewhere or you show up somewhere, whether it's a hospital or out in the public or wherever, and someone has been spitting at somebody. And you get there and, and they're already dealing with another person, maybe another officer, maybe uh, someone else in the community, and they maybe don't even know you're there. You're, you have the opportunity to come up from behind, okay? Obviously, I'm not in the line of fire as much. They can't turn on me quick, so I want to make sure I make connection fast. I'm basically going to come in. My head's going to bury right into their back, and I'm going to get this seat belt position right here. So just like they would pull a seat belt around, one arm goes over the top, one arm comes underhooked. I connect my hands together, and now my head is tight. Can you turn back and spit at me? No. No. Now I'm going to, I'm going to back up and force him to, the, to his butt. Once I'm here now, my right hand comes up to his shoulder, my left hand secures the blade of his hand. I don't want to grab the wrist. It's easy to break free. I want to grab that blade of the hand and bring it tight to him. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not choking him, but I'm pinning his head between my head and my arm. And it kind of locks his, his head in place. Can you turn towards me? Can no. you bite? No. no. Okay. So now from here, many times I've, uh, I've had people try to extend their arm to get away. And that just helps me bring it behind their back and rotate them face down move in and I got a good handcuffing position here. I got that nice wrist lock that I can put pressure on and again if another officer could come in with help help with head control, help with uh, bringing the arm around. If not, I call the arm up myself, cross your feet, bring them to your butt. I would handcuff, double lock and at this point we can slow down. They're secured, they can't spit on me right now and I can kind of take my time getting that hood on or um, even sitting them up and, and doing it. Okay. So we'll do this with a little bit more game speed for you. Coming in. Come here, give me your feet. Up. There you go. Hands. And I also I check here, make sure there's no weapons first. Lock, and we're good to go. Okay. So just a couple of ideas for you guys when it comes to uh, dealing with someone spitting or coughing at you. Could be blood, could be saliva. And uh, again, biggest principle, try to avoid being in the line of fire. Okay? And thank you very much and stay safe.